Now, at BKB33, we've got an exciting competition. Road to Thailand, four fighters, two fights. None of them know who they're going to fight. And joining me today is one of those fighters, Sonny Smith. Sonny, how you doing? Yeah, very good. Nice to meet you, mate. How you doing? Yeah, likewise. I'm doing good, thanks. So, this is exciting, isn't it? Road to Thailand, especially coming off your debut as well. It's another twist in kind of your BKV journey. How are you feeling? I'm very excited and uh, I'm really happy that I've been entered into this tournament. It's just, it's just like you said, exciting. It's something a bit different. Um, and it was also an opportunity for me, being 1-0, and to jump the queue um, and really get up there, get my name in the mix for titles and things in the future, you know what I mean? Yeah, because, you know, your name, like, people weren't expecting much from you coming into it, especially against someone like Aaron, you know, he's experienced in the game, he's one of the big names in the sport, and you beat him on your debut. That's kind of earned you this opportunity here. Uh, yeah, I was happy to get that fight with Aaron. You know, I don't want to, I don't want easy fights. I knew it wasn't going to be an easy fight. It was a very close fight, and yeah, I'm going to be honest. I thought it could have gone either way. Do you know what I mean? That's the way bare knuckle boxing is. But I was happy to get the win. But um, that was actually quite a long time ago, September. Uh, and for that fight, I didn't actually have a proper training camp. I did. I was running. I was working. I do close protection, bodyguarding. I had a 10 day job. I had six weeks to train for, I had a 10 day job and I had another like five day job. Then I had a wedding in Portugal and I didn't, my old gym I went to, my old boxing gym that I started boxing in and they said they didn't like bare knuckle boxing so they wouldn't train me for it. So I was just doing boxer size classes and running for that one. Um, I was happy with how it turned out. I did about six rounds of sparring in six weeks. This for this fight, this this camp, I've got a, a new trainer in a new gym. He's an ex UFC fighter, Cole Smith from Roundhouse Squamish. Uh, I've been sparring hundreds of rounds, training intensely, and uh, I've had an actual camp. So it's going to be night and day. So I was happy with how I performed under the circumstances in the last one, but that that wasn't a good true reflection of what the kind of fighter I am. Yeah, yeah let, let's go into that last fight a little bit more because you know what you just said makes your victory even more impressive because I think one thing that stood out to me watching it was just how comfortable you looked because usually you know we get a lot of people who, who have their debuts and it takes them a while to kind of settle into the fight and they look they're kind of like getting used to to the to the bare knuckle but you know you look so comfortable in there and you you know you would get hit you would bounce back straight away you know, is that just down to your training or for your past experience fighting? It is past experience fighting. Yeah, you know, I've grew up fighting my whole life, mainly on the streets, but I've done MM I've had some MMA fights, amateur and boxing, amateur boxing and unlicensed. I was ended up fighting in a cage in Greece at one point, unlicensed. But uh yeah, it doesn't phase me like getting hit. I've, I've done it loads, do you know what I mean? And I know after speaking to Aaron after that fight that he was a bit put off because I was so calm at the weigh-ins and stuff. I just turned up on my own. I had no team, no trainers or nothing. <laughs> and I was just calm. Like It's just another fight. And uh, when I was in there, you know, the worst thing that can happen is to get knocked out, obviously. But um, I do have quite a good chin. Naturally, I'm quite blessed in that, <laughs> that respect. So I'm not even that worried about that, to be honest. My biggest fear is always just being too like blowing out and being completely unable to throw punches because I'm too unfit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have that problem this time around. It was funny re listening to the commentator because they were calling me an office. I look like an office worker and stuff. <laughs> I don't know how people perceive me, but people tend to think that I'm not a fighter. My whole life I've had that. Like even out on nightclubs and stuff, people would try and walk straight over me and think that I can push me push over I'm a pushover and then they have a fucking surprise do you know what I mean when I'm yeah. like nah mate and then we're in a fight basically um but Aaron said that as well it's just yeah maybe I don't look like a fighter but I definitely am a fighter <laughs> yeah and I think anyone standing next to Aaron you know Aaron's Mr Muscles former bodybuilder <laughs> anyone's kind of dwarfed in that you know it's hard to kind of um put that aside how did that experience yeah, your first venture into bare knuckle. How did that um, compare with other your past experience with combat sports? Uh, it was it was different. 
although people some people on here they're saying oh when you get hit you feel it different i didn't feel it any different the adrenaline was flowing but there was no pain um but there's never been any pain getting hit like when you're in the moment it's just like it's just a bit of a blur when i was walking out to that fight though usually in my other fights i'm like in the zone like in the moment and i'm re rearing to go but as i was walking out i was a bit worried and i think that's why i took a lot of punches and in, in the first round because I was I just didn't feel the same that I used to feel I felt a bit like oh shit what's going on here I don't I, I don't feel in the zone but after that first round first 30 seconds or minute I was I was into it then I think you surprised a lot of people with with your performance even the commentators I don't know if you watched it back but the commentary is saying I, I'm really surprised at that uh, you know at this guy because it's not often we see like somebody making their debut cope so well especially against someone so experienced in the ring as well did you feel how close it was in the during the fight yeah i did i did i feel that like if i was fitter i could have done a lot more i was really holding back because i didn't want to be in a situation where i literally couldn't stand up um and was just getting pummeled um I saw punt opportunities for more shots, but I just wasn't throwing loads because I just didn't want to get completely knackered. Um, but yeah, and, and I, when I watch it back, I see a lot of mistakes, to be honest. I took a lot of punches um, and taking punches from Aaron is not a good thing. So I was actually quite banged up after that. I had to go to the hospital the next day, a perforated eardrum at one um in the third round, he hit me and my whole ear just went ding. And I was like, oh, shit, am I going to lose balance? But I didn't. Um, yeah, so my hands as well. It's always about the hands. And that's what my biggest worry. I wasn't throwing with full power because I didn't want to break my hands. Mm. But I've had a whole, since September, training my hands now so I can throw full power. And I suppose, you know, with that first fight, now that you've had that fight, you can take that experience and then apply it to this to this camp you're having now for this upcoming fight right oh yeah definitely yeah experience goes a long way in this even to the point of when the they were wrapping my hands at bkb and they were like is that how you like it and i was like i don't know i've never done it before <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> usually you get the normal wraps but yeah so i just let them do whatever and it, it worked out all right i didn't break my hands that was my biggest fear but they were sore obviously after <laughs> what were the main takeaways from that fight uh, to get a higher fitness level um, a lot of sparring in the training camp because my reflexes weren't there I was taking shots that I shouldn't have been taking and that those those are the main two really put in a training camp be extremely fit and also work on my defense yeah because you never know when you're going to get a cut or anything to stop the fight and how's your camp gone for this upcoming fight uh, it's been amazing. I've never had a proper training camp like it, to be honest. This guy, Cole Smith, he was fighting in the UFC a few years ago. He's just taken me under his wing, um, trains me like every day. And yeah, we get loads of sparring in, loads of pad work, loads of footwork stuff. It, it's been really good. I've also got a strength can train a lot of professional high level strength coach that one of my sponsors has paid for. So I've been work doing all the lifts properly that like I've been training my whole life, but I've never done like the Olympic lifts the correct way. So now I know how to do that. And it's uh, made a big difference in strength. So are we expecting to see a different Sonny this time around then? 100%. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Unusual dynamics at play in the fact that you don't know who you're fighting there's kind of stakes on the line in terms of, you know, your next fight after this, should this go well? You know, how are you approaching training differently, you know, not knowing who your opponent is? It is a, uh, it is different because I'm a big one for visualization and uh, just like everyday focusing, but to get around it, I'm training for Scott. That's who I'm training for. I think you'd have to be stupid not to in this uh, tournament. We should all be training for Scott. He's the best there on paper and in experience he's a really good fighter um so hope if it goes well i'm going to be fighting scott i think even going to fight him first which preferably it'll be in thailand or i'm going to go on to fight him in thailand do you know what i mean so i've been watching a lot of tape on all of them uh, i do watch a lot of tape for the aaron fight that's uh how i got my strategy was watching his fights uh so i've been watching what they do a lot and the good thing about Scott is he's got a lot of tape. He's got a lot of experience. Um, so, yeah, I've been training for him. 
but I'm ready for anyone really, all of them. Yeah, and I suppose that kind of works in your advantage in that, uh, you know, Scott and Johnny as well, you know, they there's a lot to see of them, whereas there's not a lot to see of you. And you know, like you said, you know, you're gonna it's gonna be night and day, you know, you've had this proper camp. You and Aaron are kind of the um the unknown entities in a sense that people haven't seen much of either of you. So I guess, you know, do you feel that advantage going into it? I do feel that advantage. And if I was to get Scott first, I wouldn't be phased. I'd be actually quite happy because that that goes in my favour. Because if is he watches that Aaron fight that I had, I know he will see the gaps that I see and he'll be like, oh, this is a this is a walkover. And uh, it's not going to be a walkover because I'm a different fighter now. That was a, a while ago. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, after this fight, he'll see the improvements. So if I do go on to fight him in Thailand, then um, he'll have a lot more time to uh, to adjust to the, the different fighter that I, I am now, basically. But yeah, whatever happens, I, I'm ready to go with anyone, to be honest everyone kind of fights a bit differently you know their kind of strengths and weaknesses are different if for whatever reason you don't get Scott and say you get Johnny or Aaron are you prepared for that as well yeah I am yeah I, I spend a lot of time watching uh watching the tape and even in the in a day I, I'll be visualizing my tactics going over uh what I'm going to be doing um yeah yeah I'll be I'll be I'll be ready for anyone really although Aaron, Aaron is the Aaron is the uh the odd one out that there's obviously only one fight I know he's had another bare knuckle but I can't see footage of it and then he's had some gloved uh fights as well on, on YouTube but um yeah obviously uh, I, I, I've researched everyone that's something that I do coming from my background is <laughs> I uh I'm very analytical if it's out on the internet I've found it and uh I'm analysing it, basically. <laughs> yeah, because it is a bit of a weird one, especially, like, you've had one fight and suddenly there's, like, this curveball thrown in. There's always a, an element of uncertainty, especially in kind of stuff like a prize fighter kind of thing like this, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not really... I don't get phased, to be honest, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm excited for the opportunity, uh, I was uh, speaking to Jim about maybe getting on that June the BYB and the and the BKB one, but they they didn't work out. Uh, and then he came up with this opportunity, uh, and it's it sounds good because I'm going to get a lot of promotion from it, uh, especially if I move on to go to fight in Thailand. Uh, that get my name out there, get my name in the mix, um, and I've, I'm sure it'd be either top of the bill in Thailand or second second main fight in Thailand, but. Fighting in Thailand will be something that I hide. I like break very highly. I've been to Thailand a couple of times. I trained at Tiger Mai Thai once uh, for a couple of weeks, and I love the people there. I love the culture. It's a fighting culture, isn't it? Mm. And um, yeah, just to be in amongst it and fight there, it'd be something that I've. It's just something to go on the like in my record, basically, and it's life experience. I'm all about life experiences, you know. Plus, whoever we're fighting, we're going to have some beers afterwards. That's <laughs> definitely going to happen. You said after that Aaron fight, you're chasing titles. You're, so it seems like legacy is something that's quite important to you. Am, am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I do research like the bare knuckle boxes of the old, like old Tom Crib and all that, and uh, I want my name to be down on that history list um, in the future. Being British champion, used to be called champion of all England. That would be something that's very important to me. Um, yeah, that that's what I'm that's what my goal is, basically. And this tournament sets me up well, to be honest. If I win this tournament, then I I could see me in line to fight for the British 76 kg title. Uh who Tony Lafferty has it at the moment, I believe. Um, the next fight or the fight after. I, I think it could be the next fight because the promotion would be rolling that way. My name would be up there. Um, so that could be early next year if it all goes well. Yeah, so you really have kind of thrown yourself into the culture, into the history and, you know, immerse yourself in the whole sport, right? Yeah, yeah. I like the heritage of it. Yeah, I do. Uh, and I, I even 
read up on it, like old fights that they used to have down with like eps and downs and stuff. I'd love to restart that. I have to speak to Jim one day. They used to have the horse races and have bare knuckle boxing in the evening, you know. They still do it. They could do it again. That would be cool. Yeah, because it really is kind of like the purest form of fighting, isn't it? It's like the OG kind of sport. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, although I've had some stigma still about it. Like I said just now about my old boxing gym. That, that boxing gym, I trained there when I was like 16, 17. And that was like 17 years ago. And I had like four fights, amateur fights for them, good friends with them. But the main trainers that I knew had left. And I went back there expecting, in my hometown, I've been away from England for about four years, expecting them to be like, oh, yeah, you got this professional fight, we'll train you. And like, I didn't recognise anyone in the gym. And then the main guy who was running it at the time there was like, no, we don't like bare knuckle boxing. And they wouldn't let me train with the carded amateur boxers and spa. And then I was just doing boxer size classes, basically. <laughs> yeah. And I had some 17-year-old guy like shouting at me to like work harder than that and then i was like what am i doing here <laughs> i also had to get up two buses it took an hour and a half to get there from my mum's house yeah so nightmare <laughs> yeah yeah because i feel like people do have this perception of bare knuckle they think of like hay bales and car parks and like although that kind of subculture does exist in bare knuckle you know there are legitimate professional promotions like BKB and BYB that are kind of um, regulating the sport and making it into a, a polished professional uh, sports sport now, right? Yeah. I think it's a massive competition to go off boxing, to be honest, because it's so exciting. You never see a boring fight and you always see knockouts and stoppages and knockdowns. It's just fast and exciting. And glove boxing has just got boring hasn't it really yeah especially yeah. like it's, it's such a shame seeing the state of glove boxing now you know people are yeah. avoiding fights the you know the fighting bums and it's just not entertaining for the fans to watch anymore and i think you know glove boxing the people involved in glove box should be worried about bare knuckle because it's this emerging sport people are turning to it because they're sick of watching boring glove fights Whereas exactly. like with bare knuckle, every fight's a good fight. Every fight's 50-50. You know, no one's given a fast track to the titles. Mm. It, it, it gives the fans everything they want from a combat sport. Exactly, yeah. That, I think that's why it's grown so quickly, to be honest, isn't it? And uh, like fighters aren't dodging, like you said. It's like they, you have to fight the next guy. You, there's no like different promotions where you're not going to not going to compete against each other or different belts or what they do in the glove boxing. So, yeah. Yeah, you're very big on the visualisation, the mental side being as important as the physical. How do you approach that given the nature of this tournament? Uh, it has been tough. It's been harder because, like, you usually visualise who you're fighting and you can't do that. But I am visualising Scott, to be honest, because I, I do see me and him fighting either this one or the one after. Um, obviously, I believe I'm going to win <laughs> my next fight. Uh, you got to believe you're going to win, don't you? Um, but yeah, I've, it's, I've just been visualising Scott. And if it's not Scott first, then I've been watching the tape with the other guys anyway um, a lot. So I'm prepared for them. And there's not such a... It's still a challenge. It's bare knuckle boxing. It's not such a challenge as, as Scott. Do you know what I mean? He's such an experienced box, bare knuckle boxer and fighter. Um, and he's he's just really good, isn't he? But he's coming up another weight class as well. So I don't think he'll be able to uh put that weight on in muscle too quickly. And I also saw on his Instagram that he only had a six week camp. <laughs> so I do watch all these things, you know. Yeah, because of course Scott's fresh off uh, fresh off fighting Aaron actually, who who you fought. Yeah. Um. So it's a quick turnaround for him. Whereas you've had a lot of time to, um, to train. You know, your last fight was was a while back. Whereas for Scott, what it's been, it would have been two months by the time he he fights again. Yeah. So and that was a lower weight class as well. Yeah. So, so I guess yeah. I kind of another thing that works in your favor should you get Scott. Yeah. 
yeah, so I'll, I'll be cutting weight for this. I don't think he's going to even be cutting, to be honest. Um, I don't know about the other guys, but I don't. I think they fought at 76 or 77 quite regularly, to be honest. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's the same with um, Johnny as much. He fought Reese Murray um, on the same card as uh, Scott. So he's got a quick yeah. turnaround. I think one thing about Johnny is that he's very durable. Um, yeah. He's not so, only fight, no way. <laughs> <laughs> he um actually looked very good in that fight. I thought it was close, to be honest. Um, but he looks good in every fight. He, he he seems to lose closely a lot. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and he's he's a tough fighter. He's, I, yeah. I highly respect him. Yeah. And he is one of the most experienced in BKB. When you look at his his the number of fights he's had, mm. he's the, one of the more experienced guys he's been in there with a lot of the guys and he, he 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 doesn't quit he doesn't he takes every fight he doesn't stop there's no quit in him i think that makes him a bit dangerous in that sense yeah it does yeah he doesn't um he doesn't lose badly either it's always a fight do you know what i mean he's never getting walked over um yeah he's always in there in the mix he's always dangerous um yeah it's yeah, none of these are going to be easy fights, that's for sure. Obviously, I just have my head zoned in on Scott because he's um, he's just uh, cut above the rest of us on paper, obviously. Yeah. Do you have like a formulated game plan for him? Uh, yeah, I do, yeah. Which I can't <laughs> talk about now. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd have a formulated game plan for each three, all three of them. I had a lot of time to think about it. I work night shifts as well. I just sit there watching other boxing fights, watch their boxing fights, just visualise. Um, yeah, that's what I do a lot of the time. Uh, when I do some runs, you know, just think it through how it's going to play out. Does it make it slightly more difficult to make those plans and to uh, kind of um, stick to those plans because you're kind of dividing your attention between three people as opposed to just one? Yeah, it is different. It is very different. It's a bit of a, it is it's strange. And every time I explain to people, they don't kind of get it. Like, uh, oh, do you know you're fighting yet? Or, oh, well, it's actually a tournament. There's four of us. And then we're fighting. So what, you're fighting twice in one night? Nah, the, the winners go through to Thailand and they're always a bit like, uh, so when do you find now? So, well, it's on the day. I believe it's on the day, actually. I don't know. I think it's the day or the day before. So say everything goes right on on July the 29th and you do get the win, you do go to Thailand, what would it mean to, to fight in Thailand? I know we touched on it a little bit before, but there's so much heritage and and and, and uh, history in terms of combat sports in Thailand. Yeah, it would mean a lot to me. Yeah, it would. Uh, I'd love to, uh, love to fight there and amongst it and have some of the Thais. There was actually a guy, when I was trained, trained at Tiger Mai Thai, you get like a trainer assigned to you for my tie and i saw him on the last bkb fight he was one of the i must have been a judge or something he was ringside sitting there so like it'd be good to see that like, i've got pictures of him when i trained in tiger my tie so i'll go and see him again and he'll see me fight um along with everyone else and it's a great venue as well i i can't picture where it exactly it is but i've obviously seen from the uh the show you know, like you've got the beach right down there uh it looks it looks amazing and hopefully I'll have a lot of people come over and visit as well. I've had some people, mates and that, talk about it. Um, so that's a good holiday for everyone. Yeah, so also, you do have like personal ties to Thailand as well as this kind of admiration of the country. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and my wife's Australian, so it's not too far from Australia there as well. So we might go to Australia after that um, for Christmas or something. I'm not sure yet. Um, I might even end up living in Australia in the future. Uh, so Thailand is a good place to train. I'd like to go there and train full time at some point in my life, to be honest. And I think there's quite a few bare knuckle boxers that are doing that now. Um, some guys that I've I've speaking spoken to. Mm. So that's what you need a, a good fighting culture. It's like that street down there with Tiger Mai Tai, um, Phuket top team. All these others just on one strip. It's just fight gym, fight gym, fight gym, CrossFit gym, like healthy food bar, smoothie bar. 
it's just this great atmosphere down there. You always amongst like UFC fighters and that. And yeah, it, it's so ingrained in the culture of fighting. It's like that you know you hear like Thailand is full of world class fighters who no one would ever know because they never leave Thailand, um, mm. which is a shame in a sense. But you know it's so ingrained in the culture that it's like a kind of mecca for for fighting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll I'll be very happy to to get that opportunity. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be pushing to get that opportunity. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about you as a fighter. You know, you said it's night and day from your first performance to this one. You know, what what are your biggest strengths? You know, how have you changed? Can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Uh, well, fitness is way up. I haven't been this fit uh for a long time since probably since I passed British Special Forces selection. Uh probably like nearly 10 years ago now <laughs> and uh strength as well like power has always been my my i've been naturally had power i didn't have it in my last fight i remember we did the press like the media day a few weeks before the fight and they had one of those punch machines and i hit the punch machine i, I messed it up a bit but i got like the lowest score out of everyone that day <laughs> i was like oh what but i hadn't <laughs> actually i hadn't trained in weights for like a year before that i was just running which is kind of depleting my muscle and uh and doing boxer size classes now i've, I've been training boxing mainly as the pr primary training um good strength program um high level strength program and uh just loads of circuits and building that muscular endurance um so yeah the power is going to be there and the fitness is going to be there but also the skill level has gone way up um, so I've had Cole Smith training me and working on my footwork, working on my, my head movement. Uh, that was something that we picked up from my last fight. There's no need to get hit so many times. You know what I mean? I uh, just need to move that head a bit more. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to show what I've been working on, to be honest. Yeah. And I know, you know, you mentioned special forces there and I know that you work in security as well. Do any of the skills that you've learned take away from that, does that come into play at all when you're training for this fight? Uh, well, I did actually do surveillance. I used to be a corporate in corporate espionage. So I was following rich people paid for by other rich people, basically. <laughs> and we'd like put up whole like Intel plans about their whole families and that. So I've kind of delved into I do a lot of research, open source intelligence on the other fighters. So I know a lot about them and I use the information that I find to build into my plans. So that, that comes into play. Um, discipline is always something that you get from the military. So I've always been disciplined in my training. And um, so that, that obviously comes into play as well. Um, and also I've been working, I work on a job here. I'm, I live in Squamish, um, I work with a lot of ex British military guys at the moment that all live here. There's like 15, 20 of us. Um, so I train with them and they just push me um, in circuits and things, push me harder than I can push myself usually, like right into the red zone where you're like lying on the floor about to throw up, you know. Uh, and that was none of that for my last camp at all. Yeah, I suppose I guess the biggest, uh, the biggest um, change is actually training boxing this time rather than in boxer size classes yeah <laughs> i just want to touch on something you mentioned earlier so you know you said that you've done a lot of research with your opponent so does that just does that research go beyond just the fights then you kind of want to know every single detail you can about them then uh well yeah a little bit yeah i want to know um when they tra started their training camp what sort of techniques they're using in their training camp um uh, any previous injuries they've had um just stuff like that really if it's out there you might as well use it no stone is left unturned as they say <laughs> so anything you can kind of capitalize on you to your advantage then you want to know yeah yeah within the within the rules you know if they put it online then then it's, it's free information isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so with your last fight you know that it was a split decision came down so essentially it came down to one point because it was uh 27-30 for, for both of you and then the last judge scored it um what was it like 28-29 or something like that so it essentially came down to one point is there any steps you've taken to make sure 
that's not as close. Like, I couldn't go either way. Uh, my output is definitely going to be higher. I'm going to be throwing more punches, um, and the punches are going to be harder. Uh, but yeah, the output mainly. I was um, taking my foot off the gas just to make sure that I could survive three rounds in that one. I was really worried about being extremely fatigued and then just getting dominated at the end. Um, so yeah, that that's going to be the main thing really. Do you have any prediction of how you think it's going to go? Are you, are you looking for the knockout? You know, are you do you want it to go to distance? How do you uh, I go? don't. I never want it to go to distance, but I don't think you should. Uh, just focus on the knockout all the time. But I am going to be, ex my plan is to be exciting for the fans. This is entertainment at the end of the day. And if I want to jump the ladder quickly, then I've got to be stopping people, knocking people out, having exciting fights. So that that's my plan. I'm just going to go all in um, right from the beginning, to be honest. And what's the end goal with BKB? Uh, obviously, British champion. I want to be British champion and I want to defend that as well. Um, defend that so you're actually like defending a title, do you know what I mean? Uh, and then work my way towards world champion as well. But I don't really look at world champion yet. I have my goal as British champion. And once, once I get there, then I switch my goal and start working to the next one. So everything at the moment is focused on becoming British champion after these, these uh, two fights, obviously. Oh, I think that's a good place to end there. That's Sonny yeah. Smith. He's playing at BKB 33 on the road to Thailand. Thanks, Sonny. Cheers. Thanks very much.